are live again. Hello? Hello? With the rats. With, with the rats. rats. With the rats. <laughs> I got I got some friends coming out and climbing on me. We this are in blueberry. hour two of Jeff trying to control the tidal wave that is two DMs playing alongside two experienced role players. And <laughs> She's licking my hand. Jen and Miss Harvey. Uh, also, they're on a quest to kill themselves. I was jokingly saying I was going to kill them, but it seems like... <laughs> they don't need that. Neil actually just wants to kill everyone from the inside out. So uh, this should be going great. You guys should have a good time. We were leaving off with uh, you guys are up against the two guards that seem half distracted at the gate. Yeah. They're distracted? All right, all right. I oh, hang on, hang on. Let me describe the gate a little bit more so that you don't just die right now like <laughs> you almost did. I've got this pouch of tobacco out. Like, let's go smoke, He's guys. He's holding it Come out. On. He's offering it. Uh, there's two guards out, but behind him, like I said, is kind of like a what looks to be... Uh, well, it's, I'm not making any mistake about this. I'm borrowing it from Skyrim, kind of. like There's usually guards by the, by the door, but then also... the. There's a like a it looks like a toll booth, if you will, behind it, but that toll booth leads into um the wall itself and then that connects to barracks at the corners of of the city. Is it um in so there's stone, no more in wood, what's that? Stone or wood Typically uh castles and their walls are made of harder materials like stone. Mm. Um or penises. Or penises. This is a very large not a very large city, but like I said, it's a city, guys. So we're talking thousands of people. This is not <laughs> thousands of penises. Is someone drawn dicks? It should be <laughs> not. Neil, uh, anyways, so back to you, Stephen. I believe you were doing Can something. Can you draw the shape of the village, please, Jeff? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I say this is a mighty fine, hard looking gate you have here. Um, why don't we why don't we go in this this little guard room over here and um, smoke a bowl of this Longshire leaf and sure. uh, talk sure. about talk about just how serious the uh, the curfew is uh, for the for the we got orders city. from our officer to lock down the town. There's been an explosion of fire and someone they're reporting a dragon sorcerer. It, it's probably nothing, but so we ask that you return to your homes until we can. Make sure everyone's safe and we've got the situation Let, under control. Let's go back to our homes. So if I've got this. Let's come back to our homes. Uh, um, thanks, guys. I go up to shake the guard's hand. Like, you know, th thank you for keeping... You very yeah, thanks for teching the city. He shakes your hand, but he's st they're all still, like, looking while, Yeah, while he's shaking my hand, I want to cast Charm Person on him. Okay, roll for it. <laughs> Neil is How many cast? spells do you Ten. have? You're, like, level... That's Ten. a cast. Right. Um, Seven to nine is partial, isn't it? Yeah, 10 is a success. 10 All is right. a success. Charm person. Uh, the person, not beast or monster, you touch while casting the spell counts you as a friend until they take damage or you prove otherwise. Okay, so he was looking off at the mm -hmm. fire behind you, over your shoulder, but all of a sudden his body kind of rocks a little bit and he looks at you and he's like, Dude! <laughs> oh my god! This is I know! The, the other Where's guy, you know what? He's kind of a jerk, but he was blocked. I know you didn't see me. Oh, hang life. on! Hang on! Hang on! Oh my god, like I don't I can't remember the last time I've seen you. I Dude, it's been I, I actually I am so happy right now. I can't even Oh yeah, yeah. Um are I you know, doing here? What are you what are you up to? Um well we're actually trying to get outside the oh. Um Elmer I, you know, I, there's no horses in the town, right? Because, you know, Elmer's got his thing going on with the factory and all. But, um, a lot of horses. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, we're supposed to be going out of town to, you know, on a, a little side gig for him. It's kind of, you know, hush-hush involves his daughter, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah but the gates are shut because of the whole dragon sorcerer thing. Yeah. You and I know each other. You mind if we, like, go out? We're clearly not dragon sorcerers. Dude! Dude, I'd love to. <laughs> the you guy up. with the red. Yeah? This is so crazy. Hey, uh, hey, Finkelmeyer... They can get through, man. I, I've been, I've been best. I can't even remember when I met this guy. I, yeah, I, we, we go so far back. Like, why even try? Really far. I mean, I'm why only, even try? Yeah, we've just oh, known each other forever. Like, feels like it's. Is that cool? Like, is there? And, and the other guy's like, he's a little bit weirded out because this energy excitement came from nowhere, and he's like, uh, he's like, well, no, we have our orders. We can't. I go to high out. five him. He's an <laughs> awkward guy. <laughs> off by that. Uh, he's he's uh, very. Hey, you've met me before. I'm Finkelmeyer, Finkelmer, and I, I go to shake his hand. I want to cast charm person on him again. Uh, his uh, he as well. un unsure, How like yeah, he accepts your yeah. hand. I can oh, do no. it until I fail. <laughs> yep. <laughs> go ahead. 
<laughs> An army of charmed persons. <laughs> Five. Fuck. That is a fail. Oh, no. So, you, you actually, he tentatively takes your hand. You pull him a little bit closer and go like, in his ear. <laughs> and he shoves you back and says, what the, what the heck, darling? Okay, what I sweep in. Darn? I sweep in and I pull out like uh, uh, an ale skin from my adventuring pack. So I'm going to mark off a uh, use of my adventuring gear. What's here. an ale skin? It's a skin of ale. Do you know? Hang on, before and we I get say, to listen, you. listen, friend, listen. Steven, hang uh, on. My, hang on, my hang friend on. is obviously good friends with Steven, your friend. Should... As I understand it, now that he failed, he can't do that spell, right? Is that the negative effect? You could make him forget it, yeah. Oh, is that my choice at all times with spells? If if he ever fails a spell, it's up to you whether or not he forgets it. I think generally it's common. Is that, that common? You forget a spell. Um, I'll say you get negative three now. How's that? Or uh, I can cast it at minus three. Extreme. Um, you could also like just have them attack him or anything like that. I was trying to think. I don't think in. I mean. Yeah, negative so I'm sure there's a lot. You might do so minus one. You said like for getting the spell, but it's like for the day, right? Okay. Yeah, for the day. Yeah, so sorry for interrupting you, but I'm trying to f I'm trying to do this correctly. I think you don't forget it. He doesn't attack you, but he shoves you back and he grabs his friend and shakes him, and in shaking him, he's dispelled from it. Uh -huh. like, what the hell's wrong with you, man? We don't know these people. And he kinda looks dazed and confused. What do you mean these people? <laughs> And he looks at you and he says, uh, well, anti-elf sentiment everywhere. I might have. I don't know who he is. And he's like, no, I, I don't. And they're, they're kind of coming to their senses now. Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. I'm, what? I'm, don't let this I'm guy talk. There. We're, we're buddies. We're buddies. I'm standing there, wine skin in one hand, tobacco leaf in the other hand, big smile on my face. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you're doing? Uh, uh, are you I, doing I a move, do you think, or are you just doing that? I'm trying to parlay. I want to yes. cast it again. Parlay move. Okay, cool. So, but wait, wait, wait. Um, because of the fail, like because of the situation they're in, mm -hmm. what would your, your modifier normally be? Um, It'd normally be plus two mm -hmm. for my charisma. I'm going to say at plus one because they're starting to move in the direction of this yeah. is a bad situation. It's, it's pretty, pretty curious. Um, so uh, I take out a pipe and I take out my, uh, my flint and steel strike a spark into the pipe, light up a couple puffs of the long, the Longshire leaf. And then I, I hold out the tobacco pouch to them, and I say, uh, gentlemen, would you care to partake just for a moment while we talk? Maybe, uh, surely, standing around guarding this gate, and especially while there's a fire in town, is thirsty work. Why don't, why don't you grab a mug from inside, and I'll pour you a draft of this uh, fine ale that I bought from the Red Dragon Tavern. In fact, that you cannot get anywhere in the world anymore. It's the last ale of its kind. All right, Steven, roll that parlay roll. Well, if, I, if I'm actually smoking with them, I get a plus one. Oh, no. Because that's what that's Yeah, what they're, long they're, they're put off right now. I'm not, we're doing this by the dice. They don't accept it all. Okay. 2d6 plus one. All right, I got a seven. It's a partial. It's okay, a partial so success. the one that was charmed seems to have some residual <laughs> effects, and uh, your options are that he will come forward and apparently want to smoke the pipe and so sees no harm in it. Yeah. Uh, but his other friend is wondering, is st it becomes certain that spells were used to make them believe this. Yeah. Or conversely, they both turn you down, but start to be more at ease in accepting a, because you seem so personable. Well, so let me read you the parlay move. Uh, when you have leverage, which is something that they need or want over a GM character, and you manipulate them, roll plus your charisma on a hit, they ask you. Wait, they ask you for something and do it if, they, if you make them a promise first. So, like, I'm trying to get them to do something on a hit. Yeah, you don't have leverage over them. No, but that was the beer and the, the tobacco, you see. They don't necessarily want that. Ah, you let me parlay. This is my world now, Steven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> parlay could mean so, anything. Exactly. If I look uh, above, so, hang on. Like, how many archers do I see? So Just you're like not... Jeff, about. you're not going to let my parlay go through? Uh, uh, go only on the grounds that I said. But, uh -oh. like, the thing is, I might be well, wanting yeah. to do an action while you parlay, letting you do the parlay as I do something else. Yeah, me well, too. The, I'm thinking about that. The well, seven hang on, to guys. Nine, one at a time, though. They, the seven to nine on parlay is they need a concrete assurance of my promise right now. Okay. So, uh, I haven't promised anything yet. 
So if you want to let my parlay go through, then I'd have to ask them for something. They'd have to ask me for a promise and an assurance. So okay. that would be hard. Yeah, I get, see, that's where, uh, for like fluency's sake, if I understood the rules better, I would be more strict about that kind of stuff. But I'm going to be pretty loose about that because otherwise we're like, I am, I'm not very fast at this, so I'll be like thinking for minutes and minutes about like what does that mean? What mm -hmm. kind of promise can we even make? So for the purpose of this and for just having fun, I guess, I would just tell you that it's, it's kind of what I said, I think. Okay. Well, yeah. So, so what are you doing? As he was doing that, well, as on, they're distracted... Slow it down, Jen, slow it down. Okay. He doesn't understand the options because uh, it was a while ago. The option is um, the guy that was under the spell seems to be pretty, you know, personal, like, thinks you guys are pretty friendly and will come forward and accept the pipe, but the other guy is going to then start to, start to wonder if spells are being used against them. Or they don't accept it from you guys, but their guard goes down and they be, they stop worrying about you because they they think you're very friendly. Oh, I think we'll just have them think that we're very friendly. Okay, sir, go ahead, John. All right. So as he's distracting them, I'm looking off to see how many archers and other people might be around protecting this door. You're looking for other archers. I'm looking for people like you said. There were people like up on the walls or something. Yeah. Uh, like, how many am I seeing? And do they look, like, ready to fire, or are they, like, oh. casually walking? No, it's, uh, like I said, this is a little bit more of a, you're out of, like, the combat zones. They're not, like, under attack, or it's not really yeah. bad. So if you just close your eyes and picture kind of the gene the generic castle setting where there's a couple of guys up there. One might have his crossbow rested across him, not really paying attention. The other one's kind of looking out over the wall. There's a couple of them, but you get the impression that it's not like I'm guaranteeing you there's two. It's just that in your purview, what you're looking at, there's two up there, but there could be one in this, in like the tower itself that's over there. There could be a couple coming around over here. Just a couple though, is all you see. Uh, considering I know Er, uh, Er, do you know how to climb as a ranger? Like climbing rocks or is that not a thing? Not a thing on my sheets. I don't Steven think so. would be the expert. Maybe Steven, Neil. Can you Everybody can climb. <laughs> everybody can climb. That All would right. be a defy danger, and everybody oh. can defy danger. Yeah. Can you repeat? I was in. Everybody, everybody can climb. Yeah, everybody can climb. That would be defy danger. Do I understand correctly defy that danger. defy danger is like based on the situation of how you're trying to defy danger? You roll against, or is it always one thing? No, it's however you're trying to defy the danger. You choose. You use the stat that it's going against. So for that so one, climbing might be strength, right? for example. Oh, strength? Okay. okay. Or dexterity, either way. Okay. Um, so I say, hey, er, tu veux qu'on aille en haut puis qu'on les pousse en bas? <laughs> What'd you say to you? I say to you. <laughs> Steven understands he, part he, of that. He can just always talk to me. It's a telepathic <laughs> thing. It's like at all times, no matter the distance, I, he Apparently. can talk to me right away. You form a telepathic bomb with a single person you touch, enabling you to converse with the person through your thoughts. You can only have one telepathic bond at a time. It lasts forever. Oh my god, I'm so annoyed by you already. <laughs> <laughs> so you basically hear me asking her if she wants to go up there and push these people down. Uh, J'ai camouflage en plus. Donc... What'd you say? Huh? <laughs> But if I say it to you... You just her whole... <laughs> <laughs> I know I did. <laughs> Counter trolled you. Now she said she has camouflage. And then she's saying too. it would be good. You know, do you really want to be reliant on a friend who won't let you talk with other people? It seems kind of it's just not unfair. Oh, no, I can't hear it. It's not that I, she won't let me talk to other people. It's that I can't talk to other people. I well, don't know how to speak this language. The guard, the guard she's never tried to teach you? Under the charm, starts no. to, he kind of tries to draw Stephen's eyes to him, like his attention, like he's like kind of looking at you. And he uh, says, hey, over here. Like, if, if, does he get your attention, I guess? Yeah, no, I, I step over to him and I, I smile my winning smile and I say, Ah, yes, sir! He says, look, sorry, we're, uh... The officer was just in the guardhouse behind us, but he's actually... Oh, no, you have your orders. Really, it's, it's, it's all right. I mean, you know, we uh, have nowhere to stay because our inn burned down, because he was just mess with the dragon sorcerer and... You know, it's uh, you know, it's a hassle, but I'm I'm sure we'll we'll get by somehow. You know, I, it's just that I had a friend who was you know going to meet me on the road, and yeah, you know, I, I met I told sure. him I'd be there an hour ago, and 
you know, all very dis- disappointing. Man, you know, this ale is really good, and I like to take a swig. Ah, mm. Would you like me yeah, to have speak common? Er? He says, I'll tell you so what. I basically tell her, <laughs> tell her, her. <laughs> I, I ask her if she wants to hop on my back and climb on the wall. Okay. What the Bonjour. fuck, you guys? Pourquoi uh, sur ton dos? Je veux pas marquer sur ton dos. I can, turn à côté toi. I can turn into a mountain goat. He says to self, he says, look, I can't oh, just... Quand même pas marquer sur ton dos. There's some risk-reward here. If you give me uh, 10 gold, I'll convince my buddy to let you guys through. But you got to go through quick. You have to promise me you'll go through, and you'll, you'll be gone at least until nightfall. You can't come back through the door. It's got to be shut. Tell you what, I'll do you one better. We'll be gone for good if you let us out for free. I, that doesn't do any... No. We're, I, look, man, <laughs> I, I want to help you out, but we're, we're given orders that no one's to leave, so they'll see you on the wall. We're going to get in trouble, but I need... You know, we could use some gold. We got some You gold. know what? I would be more than happy to leave this, this ale with you, this long shire leaf with you, and even this writ from King Elmer with you. But uh, we have no coin on us at the moment, my friend. I'm very sorry. So if you'll excuse me, I think I have to find another tavern. And I, I just sort of turn away and start strolling down the road, whistling as I go. Okay. He looks really confused at you. You're, you're, quite, you're not a character that he's norm, normally associated with. The military life's much harsher, so he kind of just watches you go in, in bewilderment. Um... And then kind of walks out again. They had like a private aside, but he walks out to be side by side with the other guard. I should already failed casting invisibility. <sighs> All right, guys, let's regroup here. We have to get out of here, apparently. Qu'est-ce qui se passe? So, wh- <laughs> Stephen, by the way, when or sorry, not Stephen, uh, Sylph, when you turn to walk away from the guards and start walking back down the street, your keen, beautiful elven eyes see quite a ways down the street. The large uh, bub and the barkeep walking, not fast, but pretty menacingly straight down the middle of the street in your direction towards this gate. Do I see this? Yes. It's, we it's, all it's, see it's this? A dis- no, your guys' backs are to the back of the street. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sylph turned to walk away from the guard, so he sees this. They're a distance down there, they're not, and they're not running or anything like that, but he sees this. What is okay. the door, uh, Jeff? Is it like a, a rope or like, yeah, the gate? How, how does it work? Is it like, like a, a chain mail draw, or? A big draw, a big wooden, hardy draw bridge. So we could door. have to cut a rope or like how? Um, you would imagine a... it's, it's, it's much more advanced than that in the sense that like it's the mechanism to operate it is inside the guard tower to the, you know, the right or left of the door itself. Okay. So um, what is this? All these shenanigans that have that you started here, Sylph. You got us into a load of trouble with your "Oh my God, I just boned the mayor's daughter" thing. Sylph is halfway down the road, and he is studying the approaching figures intently. I had followed. You're in the middle of the road, just like this, like looking at him. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I step to the side and like lean up against a, a wall or something like that. Let me rephrase. Sort of like I catch up with, with Sylph, gaze. and then I say, "Sylph, you've gotten us in a world of trouble. What's all this over?" What freaking note did you find? And then I catch up to Finkelmer and I say, Finkelmer, you've got us into a world of trouble. Why did you throw a fireball at, bar at this inn? <laughs> yeah, and then so, I say uh, back to wait, you, wait, wait, what wait, the hell's wrong with you? Why are you keeping part? a slave? I'm not yeah, keeping on, a slave. Yeah, you You're are. Weirdo guys, for guys, hang on. Me. Let my slow brain catch up. <laughs> uh, Fawn, did you just in front of the guards say to Finkelmer... Why did you set the inn on fire? I thought we were, no, we're halfway away down from the road. it because oh, we ran walking, after... That's what I'm asking. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. So you guys are walking in that direction? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. So, um, I said I catch up to him who got up to Stephen. So I'm, I'm studying these two, and I look back, and I study the gate. And uh, I turn to Finkelmer, and I say, Finkelmer, I don't have shit. I was just trying to get us out of this boring-ass town. Now... Why did you try and get us out of that damn bar? We have a situation here, and I'm trying to figure out the best way we can get out of it. We don't I would have like a situation to, here. We're fine. Everyone thinks it's a dragon sorcerer. I would like to sorcerer. discern realities, Jeff. Discern reality. Explain that for me, friend. So, uh, when I closely study a situation or a person, I can roll plus my wisdom. On a 10 oh, plus, oh, I can oh. ask you three questions from the list. And on a 7 to 9, I can ask you one question. And I get plus one forward when acting on the answers. Okay. So, here I go, rolling plus my wisdom. Okay, so I got a 7 to 9, so I get to ask you one question from the list on the sheet. 
How do I win? <laughs> oh. uh, what here is useful or valuable to me? Okay, so in this scenario, like again, um, sorry if I should have been more descriptive of this, but you know, you're walking away from the gate, but everything behind you is is either houses or businesses or mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there's people distractedly kind of looking out towards this. Like it's a, it's a very everyone's focus is over here. Mm -hmm. So if you were to go behind, you know, people for the most part, you're you're just motion in the background. They're very fixated on this. This is a more peace loving town, but there's whisperings of a dragon sorcerer that set fire to something in their town. So their concern is, oh my god, we're Focused under attack. Inwards. This thing okay. that kills everyone. So you basically, at this moment in time could do almost anything without detection except for for the people that you draw attention from but also more specifically the people that Finkelmer burned down the living the livelihood and murdered like 20 people of yeah, okay so um i duck into a nearby alley and i pull Finkelmer along with me and i say Finkelmer, did you notice just then that everybody was focused towards the center of town where that inn is burning to the ground sending up that plume of smoke into the sky of course if we i did were i'm a genius to, if we were to go behind all of these people and not speak to them, then nobody would notice us, and we could probably escape through some sort of sally port or something without needing to worry about any guards at all. So let's get the hell out of here. And so go find hold on, hold on. Your, your entire speech boils down to let's go to a gate where there's no guards. <laughs> shut up. If you were the one who noticed it, you should have You been know what? I'm pretty sure I could have figured that one out on my own. Thanks. Says Mr. I'll burn down an inn. Hey, you right, tell me where hey there's guys, a gate with no guards and we can just walk on out. Girls, what do you do as, as he gets pulled into the in the alleyway? For the two of I'm talking, talking about climbing over the thing as a mountain goat. <laughs> yeah. You're telling me this? Yeah, well, we should just climb the wall and get out this You way. guys are still out in the street and you're talking about turning into a mountain goat and climbing a wall? Is that what you're doing? No. Okay. That's what I'm saying to her, but I don't know what her says. But she's telling me in in the in animal thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. But we can like say it in English, I guess, when it's not interactions for. So Fawn, er, as you guys are having this conversation, by the way, you I go into the shadow. I'm, I'll, sir. Jeff always assumed that I'm hiding into the shadow at all times. So right now I'm in the shadow. I'm not in the middle of the street. Just, okay, then I'm. If she's talking to me, she's talking to herself. Seems like. And I'm like behind. No, her. then I'm crouching next to you, and I'm saying that. So I'm like, I think I should. You guys both the duck in <laughs> with the boys as well. Is that what you're saying? Are they right next to us? If so, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, were you looking straight ahead when you ducked, or did you look away, or are you not paying attention? Tell me that. I'm always like on my, on my toes because okay. I I'm in human town, and I'm like, what is going on, kind of thing. I'm not used to being surrounded by that much people. So, Ur, your animalistic skills and intuition as you're ducking away makes you aware of the fact that when you guys ducked away, the two pursuing, you know, people broke into a run in your direction. I telepathically communicate with, uh, <laughs> <laughs> with Finkelmer, and there I'm like, go. and I'm like, look, your friends are here. And I, I assume you turn around and check. Yeah, right? I, I look at you. What do you want so, me to do? As you guys say that, a door in this alleyway opens up behind you. <laughs> nice timing. And a gorgeously dressed, long, curly black hair, big pluming hat, red jacket, and a wooden peg legged man opens the door. And it, it, you recognize this to be a shop, but it's kind of indiscriminate. It's like a general shop. And uh, he comes walking out and he says. Diar, I've been having my eyes on you. Step inside if you want to get out of cover. I telepathy to um, <clears throat> Ur. Why don't we go on a ship to get out of here? And then I turn to uh, Sylph and be like, Hey, Sylph, I know a gate that has no guards. It's called a boat. And I, yeah, and I don't I, know why it's taking so long to answer, but uh, the offer is out there for you right fun. now. I, I, I stroll, I stroll in, proceed okay, to him, start and I say, "Ah, oh, good sir, thank you very much. This was a sticky situation. Let's just hope nobody burns your boat down." Yeah, of course, of course. And he he like paddles you guys in there and closes the door. And from the inside, you can see that his shop, uh, you know, it's square building. You came in through the side that's the alleyway, but the front of his shop is facing the street where the people are kind of out there looking in, and the gate is over here. Uh, but the two guys come running, and they go past the window, as you can see. Uh, as as they're running, he kind of closes the blinds, 
and they stop. You can Bub's a big man, like I said, so you, so you can't hear him padding because it's it's stone brick out there. But uh, you can hear like the click of his boots or whatever, and they stop his heavy breathing, and you can actually even hear the direction of his heavy breathing, and he's kind of looking this way, looks straight, looks left, and then they walk off, and you hear just kind of muffled through the door, like, ah, ah, but you assume that they're talking to the guards. Mm. Uh, what do you guys do? You're on the inside. It's a, it's a general shop, like I said, but it has a sea salt smell to it, and you are right to assume that the man that ushered you in here seems to be some kind of seafaring lad. Juan, I'll, don't you I'll, have like a, a water animal or a flying animal that could listen to the discussion they're having outside? What's oh, that? Yeah. I'm asking Fawn if she has like oh. an animal that could listen to the discussion outside. Yeah, I could. Or Is there a, a small window or a small crack where a tiny animal could get out? Uh, I mean, if you yeah. open the door or something like oh. that, yeah. I assume you guys would communicate about it. No, I mean, it's, it's a sealed, you know, it's a shop, so there's not like an open window or something like that, but you could open a door or, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I could transform, but I don't know what's the plan here. I look up this peg leg ma'am. Up, I look him up and down. By the way, I have 15 charisma. It's my second highest stat. I don't think I sure. mentioned this to anyone. Um, <laughs> you're really beautiful. And you're very attractive. I'm attractive and I'm personable. I know, life is unfair. Anyway, I look this captain up and down and say, Sir, you look like you might own a ship. Yar, <laughs> your eyes are true to the word of truth, sir, friend. I own a large boat. It's called uh, Mimades Deck. Mimades Deck. Excellent. What would it take for us to gain passage upon your Mimades Deck? Yeah, it depends. Where are you going? Anywhere but here. This place is a bore. Anywhere but here. I give Fawn a wink when I say boar. Preferably somewhere with a lot Somebody of pressure. Somebody say boar, and I'm like starting to transform. <laughs> kind of crosses his arms. And you can see it, there's lots of buckles on him and gold rings, and uh, just a, he's a very festively dressed man. You'd recognize him to probably be a pirate. Um, he says, "Lots of uh, lots of happenings happen out here, my dears. I saw you running this way and that, and talking to the guards." Trying to get out of here, but uh, yeah, I could get you a passage on a boat, but uh, of course it'll cost you a pretty penny. Well, we're become broke. Irish. We, we have absolutely no money whatsoever. However, what we do not have in money, we, we make up for in wit, ah. in entertainment, in beauty, I say pointing at myself, <laughs> and in power. We can crush whatever enemies you may have, wherever you may find them. And I have a map. Tell you what, if you can get me... He doesn't uh, have a map. Look, it uh, brings me great shame to admit this, but I haven't slept with a lady in the over three moons, as it were. Well, now. as so, we happen, we have a lady. Nah, I no, gesture hold, to fall. Hold the phone. It, not so much into the deer folk or the androgynous types, but I have, uh, I, I have a request. If you, if you can secure for me a lass that will go for one night with me on a romantic date of sorts, then... I'll give you a passage to the nearest town by way of sea, but not much further. As you are a, as the most honorable, straightforward, nice pirate I've ever met, sir. I just like women, and I want to have sex. I know, it's just every other pirate I've ever known has taken them by force. No, I, I gave that up years ago. I'm an old man now, as you can see. I oh, like cool. Women. Yeah, well, no, I'll, Good, we'll go sir. get you a lady. I can do this for you. In fact, I think I can enlist my friend's aid. And we can secure this challenge for you. But it's not going to be easy. Having a mere five coin would make our task all the more easier. Consider it an advance. You drive a yar, a hard bargain. You're a little bit of a pirate in you. I like it. He hands you a picture, a, a picture of a younger version of himself. Looks to be mid-twenties. He obviously worked on a lot of <laughs> ships. It's shirtless. Mm -hmm. He's very yeah. ripped, very handsome. Yeah, you got you gaze over the picture and see him now. He has what would be called a an alcohol a beer lover's stomach. Uh, yes, double. A, a I'm familiar picture. with such things. His nose has elongated quite a bit and hooked. He is anything but that. He's very sea worn. Uh, red cheeks, red nose. Uh, one of his eyes doesn't seem to open up all the way. Um, but he says, "Yar, five gold, sure." And this picture, of course, to to seal the deal. Excellent. Thank you, sir. All right, I, I, I pocket the five coin, and, uh, and I take the picture. Until and then I your say, is uh, more secured, I have two bedrooms above, and uh, we could play cards or something to pass the time. Cards, if you like. I say, yar, matey. Um, you know what? 
Listen, uh, I have to go really focus on this task you set us. Uh, why don't I bring my companions with me, and we will return this evening with a gorgeous young lass who can uh, accompany <laughs> you for the night. The way I do deals is we spit on it and shake on it. And he <laughs> looking into his hand and offers it out to you. I shake. Very good. Uh, it's such a large loogie that it squirts out on either side of both of your hands and drips to Excellent. the floor. That's a real deal. Now then, uh, I, I sort of, like, I, I pull open the door and peek one way, <laughs> peek the other way. And I, I motion to everybody. I say, okay, the coast is clear. Let's go. Uh, and once everybody is outside, are you guys coming with me? Yeah. All right. I, I telepathy I, I, to I understand. Let's her. Yeah. <laughs> I have telepathy let's to her. He All says right. we should walk outside now. Alon Z. Okay. Um, I, 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 I step outside. I step I around the see. corner. I walk. I walk down the road a little ways, uh, and then I, I, I call for a huddle. I bring everybody in. I say, "Okay, guys, look. So we we're keeping the gold, those, right? We can go back to those guards. We've got half of what they wanted to let us out of that gate. We can we can bargain with this, you guys. Why I do you promise. keep going that same gate? Why don't we just use the five gold to pay somebody else to take us out of town? You are so right. Let's go to a different gate where there's different guards. We have five coin. Those guys only wanted ten. They were greedy bastards. We can. Or we get could out just go this. get on a boat and get out of town that way we can pay someone five gold to take us just outside of the gate do you think they would do that i think if now that you guys are outside by the way you can hear the conversation with uh the two guys and the two guards because again bub's voice carries is a very large man yeah uh you We're trying to avoid the... that area generally oh you just said you just stepped out of the door and huddled right well not directly outside of the door because i don't want mr man inside you went to further down the the alley right. would you say okay yeah. so you don't and hear i'm trying it. not to be near where they are but maybe we can still hear them that's cool um, well, tell me, so you're out of earshot of, uh, the pirate that you did not get the name of because you guys are all rude bastards and yep. it hurts my creativity, but exactly. you are far down enough that you, the if, the vo if their voice was to cast down the alleyway, you could hear, but you're probably around a corner, right? Would you say? Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Yeah. So you don't hear anything then. Oh, okay. Okay. 